numbers that are located around the Buchanan Rec Center. You can see the 2010 compared to uh, uh, the forecast for 2021. Uh, so you can see the breakdown in households, uh, families obviously increasing with that. Um, again, you know, Evergreen, we're not seeing a huge increase in residents coming into Evergreen. We are seeing an increase of those residents that are within Evergreen um, in the participation at the rec centers. And then this is the 15 minute drive consensus of Wolf. And again, you can see the population from 2010 uh, and forecast in 2022. So these things are important to know. We, we try to update this every year um, because we need to know who our residents are and what the demographics. Uh, it plays into a lot of our decision making from staff level. Um, you know, for an example, if there, there's a kindergarten class that's very large, we can anticipate probably our numbers going up in those areas that those programs that serve that population. So, good. You want to be the clicker? I'll be the clicker. You can. All right. <coughs> and I'll be the hopefully non clicker So, getting back to it, it's the almighty question. Once again, I started out. You know, what what's our what are our concerns? Why should people care? are why are we doing this and how are you going to pay for it um, i'm not going to say i'm the county assessor expert but there are tools and instruments that if you want to know specifically kind of some of the projects um, what your assessment rate would be there's there's some sheets that can allow you to do that exercise but for our purposes today um, want to give you the rising value market and the lower assessment rate how many of you, your assessment rate went up, like mine did, almost 70%. So some people are saying, wow, well, my assessment rate went up, so you should be getting more money. There's actually a configuration out there of how property taxes are, the percentages, and we share with commercial rates versus parks and rec rate. But just to give you a specific example, on an average home in Evergreen, which was 650,000, um, calculating it by the the um, assessment rate was 51,740. Take that 51,740, you times it by the mill levy rate, that's $338 to the district. Buy that out, it's about $28 a month that you are paying property taxes or paying fees to Evergreen Parks and Rec that pays for our facilities, our trails, our parks, and the projects. With that assessment rate increasing, everybody, like I said, just to make sure you have a fair comparison. Um, the dip, it's the not the assessment rate, it's your home value. So the assessment home. rate went down. Yeah, so your home value, if they show the, that you have six, um, the average, does anybody know what the average home value is here in the district? It's 516,000 for the homes. But for this purposes, we're using 600, about 650 as a specific example. So district taxes received per household with the recent increase in property value and the new residential rate. Once again, this rate, it dropped from the 7.96 to 7.22. Um, so actually, even with your values going up, you're paying currently the same rate to EPRD. What is your source for the um, home values? Where, where did you get the home values? Through the Jefferson County Assessor's Office and the Jefferson County Assessor provided the home value? Mm -hmm. The average, and then we're working with George K. Baum on, on the, assess, the assessed value. So, Brian, you got the clicker, right? Okay. So, just want to make sure I answer that question because, once again, it's, it's the almighty question to be answered well, who is going to pay for it, and how much is it going to cost me? Yes. Is anything allocated for commercial taxes or is it strictly on residential? Yes, there's an assessed value on commercial as well. That's what balances value them. Do they participate in the funding? Yes, we do receive commercial funding for commercial funding for property taxes. Okay, so we're going to get it. We'd like to give you some quick history. Brian's actually going to give you some quick history now that I see my notes about what we have at each of those facilities, just in case. But you all raised your hand, so I hope you're, many of you are familiar with our rec centers. Yeah. So some quick history and uh, needs. If you're not aware, Buchanan uh, Rec Center was built in 2003. 
Since the original build in 2003, there's been no major renovations or improvements to this facility outside of, as we've mentioned, some internal things. Uh, but as far as expansion goes, there's been uh, none of that. It was always intended to have a second phase or a build out at some point down the road. Um, obviously, we do not have a gymnasium here at, at the Canner Rec Center. We have one at Wolf. So large programming outside of this room here, anything larger than that, uh, we just don't have the space for that. Uh, we run into some uh, issues on rainy days like today in the middle of summer when we have all of our summer camp kiddos, our sports camp kids, and, and uh, outdoor adventure camp kids are out on the field and the storms roll through and trying to find a location for all of them to come in and, and uh, you'll see kids lying in the hallways and we'll use every nook and cranny offices and stuff just to make sure that they all have a safe place to go. Our fitness area is limited. I don't know if you've, uh, how many of you come in Monday through Friday here at the Buchanan Rec Center, you walk in, you sort of look down at the bottom of the climbing pinnacle, and there are fitness classes that are occurring around the pinnacle. And if you're an instructor of that class or a participant in the class, it doesn't make the greatest of experiences as you're looking around the climbing wall to see what the instructor is saying, and the instructor is looking around the climbing wall to, to see what the participants are doing. But it's just another example of how staff here are utilizing every nook and cranny to run programs. Uh, we have some limited space down in the fitness center. If you come here again in the morning before work, after work, throughout the day, and you're down there in the fitness center working out, it can be pretty crowded at times, and, and frankly, at times it could almost be unsafe just with the amount of bodies and the amount of weight that's being tossed around. So that's one of the areas that we've identified, again, as more people are coming in and utilizing, it'd be great to have some additional <coughs> space with that. Um, the Miller House, as I mentioned, we're utilizing once CAE moved over to their new facility, we're utilizing additional space as we can just to make sure that we can uh, have as many folks uh, running in programs as we can. A little history on Wolf. Wolf was originally built in 1973 and it opened up with a swimming pool, meeting rooms, and some locker rooms, and that was about it. Uh, in 77, they added the, gym, the gymnasium to it. They added the racquetball courts, additional meeting space, and additional locker rooms. In 85, there was a $500,000 GOCO grant, or excuse me, a Jeffco Open Space grant, and that money went into building the gymnastics studio, and again, some additional locker rooms and, and building that out. And then in 2005, there was a bond that was approved, and about $1.5 million from that bond was used to renovate Wolf and again to add to that. So there's been several improvements throughout the years since Wolf was originally <coughs> purchased and built. Um, that property does sit on Jefferson County Schools property, so that is not land that EPRD owns, but it's actually land that Jeffco uh, Schools own and operate. Uh, we have built up to the back of Wolf, so if you look at each of the builds, it sort of goes up the hill, and now we're up to the point where we're bumping up against Denver Mountain Parks. So we're sort of landlocked with, with that area there. Um, and that's where a lot of, of expansion that we're looking at as far as gymnasiums and pools and some of that fun stuff we're looking at here at Buchanan just because we have uh, the space for that. Our parks, uh, as Ellen had mentioned earlier, if you've been around uh, and driven around the lake, you know that the Evergreen Lake North Trail uh, has been was closed for a long period of time. It's open now. It sort of has a band-aid fix, so to speak. Uh, we do not have a current long-term solution. We're in the middle of researching that and discussing what that long-term solution would look like. But it's definitely something that we need to uh, keep uh, first and foremost. Uh, we have several parks that we'd like to make more ADA accessible and to be able to accommodate uh, ADA and, and meet that compliance. And we obviously know that there's requests and needs for additional outdoor court space, whether it's pickleball, multi-purpose court, um, just places for folks to, to come and play. Aquatics uh, are neat. Going back to Wolf, uh, that was the original pool. That pool is 45 years old. Uh, there's definitely pools out there that are still functioning that are older than that. There's definitely pools out there that are younger than 45 years old that have had major uh, uh, catastrophic uh, uh, failures and you know, I, I don't have that crystal ball, so I can't tell you what's going to happen next with Wolf, but it's definitely uh, probably coming close to reaching its life expectancy, so we know that we need to address that. Um, we currently have eight lanes total in our district. We have six at Wolf. We have two here, two bodies of water, two totally different usages. One here is a warmer water, family-friendly, shallow water pool. 
And then we have our, uh, I don't want to say competitive, but it's our more competitive pool that we have in Wolf, cooler water, six lanes, and it does make it difficult to, uh, when you're teaching kids to swim and you're progressing through those lessons and you're going from uh, an introductory lesson with a kiddo here and then they have to transition into Wolf and then you jump into that cooler water and, and we hear on a daily basis uh, several parents and families have to take their kiddos to another rec center because once they get to that level there's no place for those kids to, to learn and, and be comfortable in the water. So that's definitely an area that we're looking at. So. Okay. So let's talk about the menu and the options. So um, just so you all know, this is what was brought forward with the 